Welcome to Hivers. I'm John Stewart. And I'm Eddie Stanton. Today, we're coming to you from the future site of the Margaret Mayhe Family Playground. Hivers, Episode 6, The State of Play. In the last few episodes, we've looked at the ways Christchurch has been rebuilt. And the movers and shakers have done a pretty good job so far. There's a lot of great things being put together for the grown-ups, but what about us kids? We need kids in the central city, otherwise it'd be boring. But how do we get kids in town? <laughs> so in 2013, Sarah challenged the kids of Canterbury to come up with new ideas for one. And in 2015, it's going to be built right here. Now we cross live to Lily with Tiny Neville from Sarah to see what's going on. Now it's time to get the info and get it fast. Short and snappy with Lily. Hi, I'm Lily and I'm joined here by Tanya. There's going to be a playground right here. And I need information now. Oh, OK, Lily. Well, um, there is going to be a playground right here. And I'm very excited about that. It is going to be one and a half hectares, the park, with about a third of that of playground, which is a one big rugby field size. That's huge. And in that, we're going to be having a lot of areas, so there's lots of things for everyone to do. Sorry, it's all... Tanya, had to cut you off, dear. Haven't got much time. Oh, Back to you so guys. Much more the... to say. Back okay. to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Lily. But who designed it? Well, it all started at the BNZ Amazing Place competition. Let's cross live to Jackson to see how it all went down. More than 6,000 kids all around Canterbury took part in the BNZ Amazing Place competition. And there's a flying fox. From preschoolers all the way up to year six. The witch has a broomstick and she flies away on it once she has her muffin. By combining their super designing powers, they came up with a massive range of ideas for the ultimate playground. All the playgrounds that I've seen too, we haven't really seen any climbing walls like this before. There are some great ideas. And this is Rocket Land, a model that I have made. My favourite part would be the dragon wearing sunglasses. And amazing ideas. But after some intense judging, a team of experts picked the very best ones. Some real creative stuff from, from children as young as three, four, five. It just blows you away, actually. I've got to say, there's some stuff that I hadn't even thought of, so yeah, it's pretty cool. The winners were announced in a massive igloo. Welcome, welcome. The mayor showed up and the prizes were awarded by the Prime Minister himself. Has anyone had a cupcake yet? Like everyone else, he turned up for the free cupcakes. Inspired by the winning year six entry, they decided to name it after Margaret Mayhew. Of course, you can't build a playground out of popsicle sticks and toilet rolls. So the competition winners got together with a design team to figure out how to turn their glue and cardboard models into rubber and steel. So actually that's a good point, maybe the cafe, it could, it could be. be near. Yeah. It should be near the pool. Yeah. Yeah. And after they finished consulting with the experts, the designers came up with the grand plan. Into the park and go to the different... So thanks to our winning year six team, the playground has been named after one of our national treasures. All sorts of stories have inspired our amazing place. To find out more, we're talking with Hattie, our literary correspondent and award-winning playground designer. Hard talk with Hattie and her purple hat. Margaret Mayhew was more than just a lady in a rainbow wig. She was New Zealand's greatest children's author. You should know her from such classics as The Changeover, A Lion in the Meadow and The Witch in the Cherry Tree. Margaret was famous all over the world, but she wrote most of her stories right here in Christchurch. She died in 2012, but she would have been very proud to lend her name to New Zealand's greatest playground. She was someone who never forgot what it was like to be a kid. Before any of this playground business, Elsie Locke had a park named after her, right here. Elsie was a famous historian, 
activist and literary genius. She's one of the people we can thank for keeping New Zealand nuclear free. After a lifetime of writing books and fighting the good fight, Elsie died in 2001 and her ashes were buried under a tree on the banks of the Avon. Elsie and Margaret were pretty famous, but we can't forget the first Christchurch storytellers, Nai Tahu. So we talked to local artist Priscilla Kawi about how her ancestors have inspired the new playground design. What's your involvement of the design of the playground? Okay, well I'm a Hekai Mahi Poyo. I'm a Ngai Tahu artist and so part of my, my mahi or my work is um, sharing our Ngai Tahu stories through art. Oh. Imagine a, a waka unua, a double hold waka, and all the ocean travelling that they did. Our maunga, and you have around us here, we have the beautiful, the maunga that they travelled. They also travelled along from the oceans down our awa on Mōkihi. So Mōkihi are raupo rafts. And so within the water play area, we're going to have some mōkihi. One of the underlying concepts for this park is about atawhai ki te iwi. So atawhai ki te iwi is about caring for our people and that's what we hope to create here as a place that shares our ngaitahu stories, but also shows our care for our people and the environment. Nā te pō titiratu ki te ao mārama, always see the light into the future. So this is the future that we're creating here, a future for, for everyone at Ototahi. Tēnā koe mō tō wā, hei whakamārama e mō mātou pātai me ngā mea i pāna ki te papatāko. I thank everyone who's been watching this video, yep. As you can see, a lot of imagination has gone into making this place awesome. Very true, Jono. And I've just finished my model. A playground in the clouds. I give you the Margaret Mahi Sky platform. Each corner of the platform is attached to a hot air balloon, so it can play thousands of feet above the city. And if there's another earthquake, and everybody's so high in the sky, you won't feel a thing. Um, Eddie, that's not a particularly well thought out plan. Well, who's the playground design expert here? The finger points to moi. We sent our team out to talk to the actual playground design experts, Grant McLeod and Catherine Hamilton, to find out how to properly design a play area. It's time for Hannah in Montana, with Hannah and Montana. Hi, Grant. How are you doing? Hi. How are you? <laughs> so, what's it like being a playground designer? Uh, it's pretty sweet because you just get to be a big kid all day long, um, thinking about when you're going to go for your next slide or your next swing. So yeah, suits me. So what's your favourite part of the playground? Um, I'd have to say it's going to be the big slide because there's like about 10 people that can fit on it and all roll down together, so it's going to be awesome. Cool. I try that so much. Yeah. Obviously all the kids are going to want to come here. Yeah. Um, if we try to convince our parents, what's going to be here for them? Well basically all the playground's going to be designed so that they can actually use the equipment as well. Um, and if they don't want to do that, we've got heaps of seating areas for them to actually just chill out and grab a coffee from the vendor that's going to be set up down the way. But if I'm honest, I'd be making them jump on the flying fox and the slide as well, because it's going to be big enough. <laughs> Will there be good accessibility for people in wheelchairs and younger kids and stuff? Yeah, so that's been one of the, the big talking points around this, is actually making it inclusive for everyone. Um, so not just different ages, but different abilities as well. Um, so there'll be different elements, you know, built into the ground, stuff that's low, stuff that's high, kind of creating a challenge for everybody that turns up. Cool. Thanks, Grant, um, for talking to us about the playground today. It sounds absolutely awesome. Oh, you know, it should be fantastic, and we'll look forward to seeing you guys down here for the, uh, for the opening. Thanks a lot. into a playground for kids? Well, the first thing that we needed to do was to come up with a big idea. So we had to find a way to divide this huge big area into smaller spaces. So we decided on using the Canterbury landscapes as a theme. And so if you take, for instance, the wetlands and the beach and the farmland with all of the agricultural patterns, 
and the forests. So that's what we'd use to create the smaller spaces within this very big park. When, when you were a kid, did you have any favourite things to go on? When I was a kid, my favourite playground was at Burnside Park and what I really liked there was the high slide and I liked that because I was scared and it made me really scared and then when I played on it I felt a great sense of achievement when I overcame my fear. So that's what we do with these playgrounds, we put challenges into them so children can face their, their fears and in doing so they build up a lot of confidence and ability. Thanks Catherine for your time. It's been interesting. I can't wait till it's open. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks guys. But what sort of things will we get to play on? Well, to show you exactly what's in the playground of the future, we're using technology of the future. Lasers? Nope. Robots? No. Special effects. So to break it all down, here's Jackson and our state-of-the-art virtual playground simulator. Hi, I'm a realistic computer-generated version of Jackson. Welcome to the future. On the plains is a whole lot of turf for a ball sport of your choice. And a ring of pavement that has words and pictures from our local storytellers. Over in the dunes and wetlands, there's a giant sand pit with a beach lookout tower. Pumps and channels that can be dammed, diverted and flooded. The forest area is arranged around a place spine that rises up to four metres. From the spine, we can get to a 10 metre high climbing tower, which leads to an 8 metre spiral tunnel slide. A double flying fox for flat land racing action. Three, two, one. In ground trampolines for jumping from A to B. A four metre wide slide. And a bunch of tunnels for hiding from your parents when it's time to go home. Jackson! And that's how it stacks up. A perfectly formed playground for kids and by kids. Right, back to you guys in the real world. So there you have it. Christchurch's very own world class play space. And it's worth getting just right. Because after all, happy kids means a happy town. They all need somewhere to hang out in the central city. Thanks for watching Hi Viz. I'm Jono Stewart. And I'm Margaret Maher. We'll see you next time. On Hi Viz. Once upon a time, there was a little, little girl called Eddie. She was on a TV series with the other anchor called Jono. He was all stinky and wrinkly. He couldn't read his lines and wished he could just be like Eddie. <laughs>